This is a video about my uh, turtle tank filtration system. I have a uh, trickle sump wet dry filter, probably the most efficient kind of filter for biological filtration. The tank is made of acrylic, it's 8 feet long, it's 3 feet in width, 17 inches high, water depth is about 12 inches, so there's about 200 gallons of water in the tank itself. Now below the tank is a smaller tank called a sump, which is part of the wet-dry filter. The sump has about 25 gallons of water in it. There are two pumps in the sump, one pump that pushes water to each back corner of the tank. There are holes drilled in the bottom of the tank. Uh, the plumbing comes up through the bottom of the tank and uh, water is um, outflowing into the tank. As it does that, the water level attempts to rise, and, uh, but it overflows into what's called an overflow tube. That's a straight piece of PVC pipe coming straight up from the bottom. The water overflows into that tube and goes right back down into the sump. Now let's take a closer look. Just want to show you the plumbing um, on the uh, aquarium side that's uh, coming up from the bottom of the tank through the holes that are drilled. You'll see uh, the return pipe, that piece of PVC, the water is coming up from the sump, it's being pumped up out that black flexible nozzle and into the tank. There's another piece of plumbing, a, PV, a piece of PVC pipe that sticks straight up from the bottom. It's a little hard to see there, but you can see water flowing down that pipe as it overflows. That pipe is exactly 12 inches long, which is why the water is 12 inches deep. If the water gets any deeper, it goes down that overflow tube, back down through that vacuum cleaner like hose and into the sump where it's filtered. So out this nozzle fills the tank with clean water, unfiltered water pours down that overflow tube back into the sump where it's filtered and around and around we go. Okay, there's the, there are the two pumps. Um, one pump pumping water off to the left back corner and another pump pumping water up and out to the right back corner through the holes in the bottom of the tank and into the tank. Now the overflow tubes uh, direct water back down through these vacuum cleaner like hoses into what's called a bio tower, which is where the filtration takes place. And let me explain how that works. That is uh, what wet dry filtering is all about. Okay, the first stage of the filtration is mechanical. There is uh, plant material, there's uh, debris like uh, turtle poop, uneaten food, fish poop, whatever. All that stuff gets filtered initially through this uh, light fibrous material. It provides some mechanical filtration. You can see the water flowing down. It's coming from the uh, tank. This is water that needs to be filtered. The water flows down through a drip plate. The plate underneath that fibrous material is full of holes. Get that camera angle there. And causes the water to come through like rain. Rain pours down on these bio balls. These are uh, small plastic balls that are specifically designed to create a tremendous amount of surface area. As the water flows through these plastic balls, a thin film is developed around the surface, inside the surfaces of these balls, and you get great oxygen transfer uh, from the air into the water. Now, why is that important? Well, biological filtration, which is the most important kind of filtration, requires a lot of oxygen to feed oxygen-hungry nitrifying bacteria. Nitrifying bacteria are the bacteria which break down toxic ammonia and nitrites to relatively harmless nitrates. And that occurs right there on those little black and blue plastic balls. Underneath there is some cell pore rocks. I get additional biological filtration from those rocks. Even though they are not getting a direct interface with oxygen, uh, there is a lot of oxygen in the water, so the nitrifying bacteria grow very well on those rocks. I should add, coming back up to the tank, all those surface areas that you see there, the wood, the plants, even the sand, are growing nitrifying bacteria. So the more oxygen you have in your water, the uh, better it is for those kind of bacteria which do the biological filtration. Now maintenance is a breeze here. All I have to do is lift up this lid, I pull that uh, fibrous material out, toss it in a bucket, put in new um, mechanical filtration media there, close the lid, takes about 30 seconds and I'm all done. Uh, anyone who has a canister filter knows how hard um, maintenance can be and there is nothing easier to maintain than a wet-dry filter. 
Uh, the reason the water has a slight tint to it is because I have a lot of wood in the tank and that produces tannin. Tannin is harmless, but it does tend to create a tea-colored water, which uh, I manage with partial water changes. By the way, partial water changes also manage your level of nitrates. Even though nitrates are not particularly harmful unless the levels get very high, they should be managed with partial water changes, usually weekly. The long tube you see there is a uh, water heater. Uh, keep it in the sump, which is uh, nice. Keeps it away from the turtles. That's an uh, air pump. Keeps an aerator going so I don't get any kind of slime buildup on the surface of the uh, sump. I also have one inside the tank itself, which uh, serves the very same purpose. Now, uh, get a lot of evaporation. This tank has 24 square feet of surface area. And uh, managing evaporation is a real job. And I do it with what's called an automatic top-off device. As water evaporates, the water level in the sump drops rather than in the tank itself. So I have a sensor, that kind of gray strip you see there going down into the water. That senses the depth of the water. When the water gets a little bit shallow, it sends a signal to the automatic top-off uh, control box. And that turns on a small pump. They come over here. In this 20-gallon uh, aquarium, you see a little aqua-colored pump way down there on the bottom. And uh, that pumps some water over into the sump and keeps the water level um, steady. So I can go on a vacation for a week and come back and although the water level will be down in this uh, reservoir, uh, it only goes down maybe, uh, maybe a gallon and a half a day. So <clears throat> I can manage evaporation without even being here, so it's real nice. I don't have to keep adding water um, every single day with a, with a, uh, a bucket or something like uh, you would if you didn't have such a device. One other thing I'd like to show you, which is nice, we have power failures here in Florida and sometimes they last hours. And I have a device here which will keep one of the pumps running for six, seven, maybe even eight hours um, during a power failure. And that's important because I want to keep water trickling down over these uh, black and blue balls. Uh, otherwise, if uh, the uh, pumping stops, these, the balls dry out and the nitrifying bacteria will die. However, uh, that's part of the reason I have these cell pour rocks underneath. They will stay wet even when the uh, pump turns off and uh, the nitrifying bacteria will survive a lot longer under there, even though the oxygen levels will drop a bit. I think I've covered uh, most of the details. If anyone has any questions, feel free to post them and I'll be glad to answer them.